Hi everybody, it's Kevin Raber and uh, I'm back with another video. And today we're going to be exploring the new Capture One 21. It just was released a couple days ago. I've had it for a month or so playing with it in the beta format, but I wanted to download a working version and kind of give you a quick demo of some of the new features that it has and why it might make a big difference in the way you process your raw images. So let's get going. The first thing I'm going to show you is the new importer. So let's take a look at it. I called up a test screen. I made a test session over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over and go File, Import Images. And that'll give me a, a screen. And I'm going to go to, we'll go up in here. And we're going to find C1 demo files. That automatically instantly goes and finds the folder, and you can see how quick it displays the images. And look at how fast I can scroll through them. Now, what's different here is that this importer now, as you can see, has orange check marks. Anything with an orange check mark will be imported into Capture One. At the very bottom of the screen, we have a thing called pick all. So we're just going to pick all these images. We have an import all, we have a cancel, and then you can decide if you're importing from a card at the very bottom on the left to actually eject the card um, and erase the card after um, importing, which I suggest you never do, just in case you need to import it again. One of the things that we can do is change the size of the images. So I can grab the zoom bar up to the top here and make these images rather large. The purpose of this is to allow you when you have shot with a motor drive, say of a, a bird flying across the sky and you have 20 pictures that aren't any good, no, not worth importing, that you can go ahead and click on the ones that you want to import. In this case, I'm going to import everything because this is all part of a demo file. So I'm gonna leave all the boxes checked off. In addition, what I'm going to do is you have to decide where you want it to go to. All right, what I'm gonna do is check the test import sessions box, I'm going to click that, and I'm going to select the capture folder. And now I have all the images coming from that folder that would be going to this particular folder. In addition, if I wanted to, I could enable a backup over here and uh, create a secondary folder as a backup automatically at that time. So sometimes when I'm in the field, I'll not only do an import, but I'll also have an external drive selected, and I can select that internal drive and uh, decide where I want to put it. Uh, you can also change naming and all sorts of other things uh, in regards to that. So I want to show you how fast this imports. I select the import all button at the bottom. And just like that, these images start coming in super fast. And you can see that they're all showing up there as fast as I can scroll. They're showing up. And I can click on any one of them at any point, and the proof will be rendered. And you can have a progress bar at the very top that shows how fast they go. Now, the import happens so much quicker than the previous version, and the generation of the previews also happens very quickly. So you can see that goes, so I got about three minutes to uh, uh, make them import, and after that, we're set to go. So now, once all our images are in the system as they are now, it's time to take a look at some of the other new features of Capture One. So let's start off with the basics. One of the things that Capture One now has done is to make it easier to use because when you're on a tool, you can now find out what that tool does and you can even go to a tutorial if you have a question about it. Let's take a look at that. So essentially I can go up to any one of my tools in the toolbar, hover over it, and I get sometimes a little picture like this tells me what it is, and then I can actually go and watch a quick tutorial if I'd like. So by clicking on the Watch Tutorial, it goes into Capture One. Uh, on the website, hooks up, and here's a tutorial I can watch on that particular um, subject. So that's the Hover tool. So you'll find that on almost just about any tool you can go to. And it's quite handy. Never had it before. Wish they had it years ago when I was learning Capture One. Um, the next thing I want to show you is uh, quick key editing. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a different mindset. 
Uh, I wasn't sure I would like this in the beginning because I'm not one for keyboard commands. Yet this kind of takes the whole concept and makes it a lot simpler because you don't have to use a modifier key. What Quick Keys does is allows you to open up an image and with uh, certain keys, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, just use my mouse slider and or the arrow keys and make adjustments. So first off, where to find the menu for all this so you can actually know what the modifier keys are. We'll go up to Edit Menu and pull down to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts and we get a screen that shows up that tells you what the modifier keys are for exposure, high dynamic range, white balance, dehaze, clarity, levels, vignetting, and so forth. Now I don't have tools set for uh, some of those because that's not the way I like to work all the way, but I may end up putting more in. I also found it was handy to end up making a print out of that and using that as a cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> it helps quite a bit when uh, you're first getting started to have a, a cheat sheet like this. So we'll close that screen and let's try it out. Well, we know the first key is the Q key and that does brightness. So let's try it. I'm going to hit the Q key and then I'm going to just slide my roller. In this case, I'm just using the roller part of the mouse, as you can see, and that's making the adjustments. You can also drag left and right with the mouse on a mouse pad or whatever and do the same thing. So, uh, and at the bottom, you'll see the tool and you'll see the settings. So you can kind of follow along if you want. So I like to use the, uh, the little wheel on the mouse. I think it's a little bit easier. So essentially, I'm just going to get this to where I sort of want it. Next key is W. That's going to do contrast. So you, that's low. And that's high contrast. So I kind of just want to put this where it is. Uh, e is brightness. I don't you ever really use that. And then, of course, this is the R key and that saturation. Yeah, that's more like it, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get that back down to somewhat of a normal level. And I can use the one key. Whoops. I can hit the one key and do my color balance from warm to normal. One of the really nice new features of Capture One is the dehaze feature. Let's take a look at what this cool feature is all about. First off, let's just get an idea of what dehaze means. Here's a landscape image that's up on the screen, and you can see that it's pretty hazy. So I'm gonna go over to my toolbars. Now I have my system set up a little differently than uh, comes out of the box. This is a custom workspace. And essentially all my tools are uh, on the right and go from top to bottom. Now you can scroll right through them. These are my most used tools. You can see dehaze sits here, but for the sake of this, I'm going to go and create a flo floating tool bar and pull the dehaze button out so that we can actually see it in the image as we work with it. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start making my corrections, a little contrast, a little, so I, I kind of do my corrections ahead of time where I'd like a little clarity thrown in here. And then I take my dehaze tool and watch what happens. I slide the dehaze tool over and you get rid of all the haze, slide it back to where you kind of feel like you like it. Now I have it on auto, and what auto does is automatically detects what it thinks is the, de the haze in the image and automatically selects it. I also have an eyedropper where I can go down in the shadow, and you can see the shadows kind of in the purple side of things. I can select that as a dehaze, and now it kind of selects that color purple and cleans that cast up so that it's not so bad, as you can see what I've done here. Um, let's take a look at a number of different images as we go along here. Um, here's a, a very simple picture. Oh, by the way, before I do that, let's actually look at the before and after here. So here's the before of that shot, and here's the after of that shot. So you can see that there's a, a pretty significant difference in the way it works. We're going to take this image now. This is a church in uh, Iceland. I'm going to make a couple corrections. I want to warm it up just a bit. Throw some contrast. The exposure looks pretty good according to the histogram. I'm going to hit auto levels just to kind of punch it out a little bit. Hit the shadow, open up the shadows, a little clarity. Now I'm going to come to the dehaze tool and take it another step further here. So you can see that I can take most of the haze out of there. It also ends up darkening the picture. So sometimes 
You might just have to throw in the shadow button, but you'll also see that it opens up the highlights in the sky and uh, gives a much better uh, look with that also. Uh, and here's a before and after. So you can see it does a pretty nice job. One of the areas it does a really nice job on is astrophotography. So in this case, I've got uh, Northern Lights. I'm going to first off <clears throat> hit the uh, uh, Levels button to adjust for the exposure overall with this. And then I'm going to come in and just bring the brightness up, the contrast up, a little recovery in the shadows, a little bit of clarity. Now let's look what happens when I get the dehaze tool. I can slide it all the way over. It opens it up. Use my key. Select the tone. And you can see that it really kind of punches things out a little bit. Watch what happens here in the before and after. So here's where we started. Here's where we ended up. And you can see a lot more stars come into the picture. And it's a, a much nicer image than what we started with. Now I'm going to go into... Uh, a rainbow shot and show you what happens here. So I can kind of click there, open up the shadow there, open up the contrast, go to dehaze, kind of open it up. Now because uh, it darkens off because of all that shadow, we might need to come in here and adjust the exposure a little bit. And um, I'm actually going to pick a color of the dehaze so that it automatically creates a a different look but let's take a look at the before and the after so you can see it's kind of low contrast because I'm shooting it in such a mist but I can open it back up and on regular rainbow shots on the landscapes and so forth does a significantly good picture there too all right now that we've seen how the uh, rainbow picture works let's take a look at an iceberg so I'm going to scroll down here and I've got this beautiful iceberg. It doesn't look so bad as it is at this particular point. If you look at the histograms and everything, they're all right. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. I'm going to throw some contrast in here, a little saturation. Open up the shadows just a hair. And I've got a pretty good, nice looking picture. But watch what happens with the dehaze tool. Man, do you see the difference? Classic case of really being able to put in some drama and uh, it really come, it comes out pretty cool. I think I mean, almost can leave it there. Let's take a look at the before. So here's a before, which is kind of a nice looking iceberg, but look at the drama that comes in by just working with uh, the dehaze tool. One more image where it works really well is sometimes in the landscape photography. Um, this is a photo done of a bunch of horses running across a pasture at the Great Smoky uh, National Park. And uh, let's take a look at what happens when we make a few adjustments. I'm going to warm the image up a hair, adjust the contrast, adjust the saturation, open up the shadows just a bit, and then take dehaze and just kind of move it one way and then move it back to another where it sort of retains a little bit of haze because it was kind of hazy that morning and uh, it ends up giving me a pretty nice picture. And, and let's just take a look at what happens when I hit the levels button. One of the things that I've learned here is that uh, usually I use the levels as one of my first adjustments, but with the dehaze tool, it changes the way the light and everything ends up in the picture, changing the histogram. And thus, I now am applying my auto levels or you know the level balance um, at the, uh, the, the back end of my image editing. But you can see what a nice clean picture that is, and let's take a look at our before and our after. So here's what it looked like as a, a raw going in, and that's how it comes out at the back end. Pretty damn nice. Another new feature that uh, Capture One has, uh, which many of you will find to be helpful, although it's very subtle, is uh, Pro Standard Film Curves. Um, so let's kind of take a look at that and see where it makes a difference. I've gone ahead and pre-selected a number of images already, and I tag them as yellow, so let's just bring those images up and let's take a look at this image. So Film Curves uh, works very closely to make fine-tune adjustments in your particular images. Um, and sometimes they're really subtle. You won't see the differences unless you're standing and sitting in front of a computer. But 
I've uh, called up an image and we now have the base characteristics up there. And what I want to show you, the base characteristics has an area called ICC profile. And it has a generic, and it used to only have a generic for the A7R Mark IV, but now it also has a pro standard, as you can see, uh, highlighted here. And if I select it, little subtle things happen. It's basically sometimes in the blues and uh, kind of makes somewhat the colors a little bit more intense. So now that I've selected that, I'm going to go ahead and increase the contrast, warm the image up. Now, as you can see in the white balance sliders, they now have colors in them. So I'm going to move to the yellow side, which is the warmer side for this particular image. Um, and I'm going to add a little saturation. Recover the highlights. Open up the shadows. And I have a really nice image that pops up. And I am now in Pro Standard. I'm going to also now switch back to Generic. And it's kind of just, if you watch it, there's a wave of color that comes by. We'll go back to Pro Standard and do it again. Boom. Okay. One of the areas that you can really notice this difference, though, is in blue. So I'm going to take this particular image and zoom in for you. It's at the top of uh, one of the mountains in, uh, in Yosemite. So right now you can see uh, I have A7 uh, generic uh, selected. Watch the blue sky as I make the switch. Here we go. See how it goes kind of a different kind of blue? Generic is like a little yellower blue. That's a, a different blue. So it really works in the blue sky, specifically if you have areas where the sky is kind of purple and you need to make an adjustment from that, that blue to purple kind of uh, uh, thing that happens once in a while in your images. So uh, this helps very, very much along those lines. So just a few more things to look at on Capture One. Really can't look at them, but they are just things that you need to know. Uh, one of the new features also on Capture One is the ability to tether to the Leica cameras. Uh, you, there'll be a list in the text in the article for the Leica cameras that you can now tether to. Hopefully more will show up in the near future as well as uh, more tethered cameras in uh, uh, other manufacturers. Uh, also want to make a quick note in regards to the... Uh, uh, the pro standard uh, curves that I showed you just a little while ago. Uh, a lot more will be added as time goes on, so there will be constant updates coming where new cameras are added and the pro uh, standard uh, film curve is going to be added along with those. And uh, one last thing is that uh, the Capture One is able to work with HEIFC files, high efficiency image format files, pretty much uh, those are the files coming out of uh, iPhones and uh, mobile devices. Um, they're like JPEGs, but they're more compact and retain a lot more data, uh, kind of like the new JPEG. Um, we'll see if that gets uh, adapted along the line. So uh, that's also something you can do. We'll have more um, videos in regards to how to use those. So in the end here, I want to say a Capture One 21 is a, a pretty cool update. I had expected, frankly, uh, a bit more uh, in the feature set and some new tools. Uh, there are a lot of things that aren't uh, all the way fixed in Capture One. Uh, I have my gripes about, and we, we'll cover those uh, at another time. Uh, one of those is in the Keystone correction tool. Uh, I'd like it to be set to 100%, then let me set it back to 80. But I'd also like to see like the lines in that tool uh, be thicker or a different color or have a, a preference panel where that can be done because many times when I'm using that tool, which is a very good tool, I lose the lines and the lines of the building and different things along those lines, and it becomes very difficult to see where my corrections take place. Simple things like that drive me crazy, and I wish you know, they'd be part of things that are more common sense in regards to the interface. Um, I will give them credit, though. They did put the before and after button in in Capture 120, and to me, that was a biggie. Um, you know, they had a keyboard command, and my thought was, if they can have a keyboard command, why can't they have a button? Uh, I use that tool quite a bit. It'd be nice to see History Palette and a few other things. I'm sure they know all about it. As a matter of fact, I can tell you, because I talk to the folks at Capture One uh, every now and then, that uh, they do know about it. So hopefully uh, that will come up on the developers list and we'll see something more in the future. As always with Capture 21 and Capture One period, 
Uh, we'll see a lot of updates coming along the way. Uh, there's a lot of good topics on our forum at photopxl.com that you can uh, participate in and get answers from, from a lot of different people. It's becoming a lot more active as uh, time goes on and we grow. And um, you, you'll find that you can get many things figured out and discussed with uh, fellow uh, PXL members. Uh, I want to thank you for watching this video, being part of PhotoPXL, and we're trying really hard to enhance your vision every day. If you like this video, please go to the YouTube channel and subscribe, and if you want, hit the bell and you'll be notified when new videos are coming. We have four or five videos already in the can that will be coming your way very soon, so watch for those, and we'll be doing a lot more with Capture One and another program or two in the, the very near future. Plus, just so you all know, we have uh, some new enhancements coming to PXL before the end of the year, uh, and uh, we're going to be quite excited to share those with you, so stand by and watch for those. So we're not sitting on our hands here at Boda PXL. Once again, thank you very much for being part of the family, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.